when we innovated the backyard sump pump way back in 1983, it's such a great feeling to see all these other companies following the lead and actually improving upon it. So take a look, watch the video, and learn how to do this yourself. Be sure to note how we wrap this sump basin in fabric because of what we're doing here. Take a look. Hey, good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're putting in a sump pump and sump pit to help relieve a crawl space problem. You can see the problem here. Water just pours down into this crawl space. So basically what we need to do is we need to put a sump pump and a sump pit over here where Dan's digging out, starting to dig out the area. And that water comes from the downspout right here. Of course, you can see it picks up that entire roof. And also from the pool pavers. They've got quite a bit of an area here that collects water. They do have a channel drain, as you can see. And of course, all that just discharges right over here and really had no place to go. So putting in the sump pump and the pit will allow us to collect the water and then we'll pump it all the way out to the street. You know, 25 years ago, we started using this sump liner. Some people call it a sump pit, um, but it's a sump liner made by ADS. And we started using this in the backyard where it was uphill to the street. And ever since then, you know, I've seen so many companies do the same thing, which is great. And it's the real secret here is to have a really good pump. And on this one, we're using an M53. It's a little smaller than the M98, but it works great for this application. I really think that Zoller makes the very best pumps for the backyard situation. So we're busting off this excess mortar that holds on the pavers just because we've got to have it wide enough for our pit to get inside there. Now we'll go ahead and clean that out. You can see there's a sprinkler line down here. It's also in our way. We may have to cut that and move it, or maybe we can just bend it around the side. We'll see. But right now we're just excavating it and take the shovel and just clean it all out. But you can see we're almost ready to set that pit in here. And from that point, things will really move along. So we've got the hole for the sump basin installed down here. And you can see now we had to pull the pavers. So we stacked them out here on the side at the way that they were pulled out. And then we just trench a little line. It just has to be barely under the ground. And using the pick works really good. So you just scrape through it with the pick and it'll be probably at the perfect depth. We just need to be underneath of those pavers. And then we'll hook into the discharge pipe that we've already installed on the other side. Okay, we're ready to start setting the sump basin, the sump pit. And what we need to do here is to perforate this pit and we'll surround that with some fabric so that no soil can get down inside that pit. Very important to remember that you need to wrap that if you're in a sandy area and, and or if you just simply uh, perforate your pit, you need to wrap that with fabric so that no debris can get down inside. Real simple, drill a bunch of holes all around it just to let the water in. And always remember to put gravel around the outside of your basin. That allows the water just to perk right straight into the pit. Works really good. In fact, sometimes you can just put the sump basin you know, out there and you'll be able to collect the water without the French drain or the catch basin, but not always. This sump liner made by ADS is not a catch basin and people get that confused. It's not a catch basin. This is a sump liner. We call it a sump pit, but it's not a catch basin. It does not have a grate on the top. It has a solid lid cover and you really need that solid lid cover to help keep the debris out. I think the best place to find all the drainage supplies is Lowe's. Home Depot does carry some, but Lowe's carries a much larger selection of everything. So a really key note is the soil separator. We need to use the soil separator. We wrap that around our pit. And then we're just going to secure that with some duct tape just to hold it in place. Then we'll cut this off and we'll set the pit in place and we're ready to install the pump. So you can see we've wrapped the pit with landscape fabric, the drainage fabric, opened a hole because our, this is our inlet line. Let's just make sure everything fits properly down in here. Oh yeah, looking real good.
So next we're going to pour some gravel around the sides of it right here so that it can, all the water can just perk in. As that groundwater rises, we want to make sure that it enters our pit. So we've got some gravel by the bag. You can use either marble chips or drainage rock, either one. Takes a lot of gravel, so be prepared. So we've got our stone coming all the way around the sides and the you know of this of the sump basin now we're going to go ahead and set our pump in here we're going to plumb that we're going to drill a hole right through here for our discharge a two inch hole for inch and a half pipe it's going to come over and tie into where we okay, are so we've got our plumbing all done you can see we've got a four inch pipe coming up to their downspout put a 90 on it a T, of course, to bring that in. That all discharges into the pit. We also put a catch basin here because this area is going to be gravel. And what it's doing is it's picking up the channel drain because there's not really any fittings. This, this is, by the way, called super channel drain. And it's inch and a half bottom at square top. But we're just going to bring gravel here and let it drop right into our catch basin, which goes into the sump pit. And the pump will carry it out. On the other side, we're going to—we're just getting underneath the pavers for future expansion, and we're just putting a little 90 on the other end. We'll put a grate on the top. Any water that comes across the yard will drop into that system. So now let's go ahead and plumb the pump. So we're going to go ahead and glue this up. Zoller M53. This is our riser. Push it, twist it, and hold it. Hold it in place. Just for a second, because it really has to grab a hold. Next, we're going to put our 90 on it so that we can come through the hole that we drilled and we're going to come across and hook into that piece of PVC on the other side. Let's go ahead and glue our 90 on. Remember, everything's movable at this point, but we can come pretty close here. Looks real good. So now we're going to go ahead and glue up the discharge line, good amount of glue around there, some on the inside of your coupling. <clears throat> then we're just going to push it together. And hold that and we got her. Okay, so now we're going to make our final connection. I'm going to go ahead and glue, glue up our 90, get a little bit more on here. Remember, PVC, once it, once it touches the other section, it will bind this on there and glue it. It just welds it together. So you got to be ready to do it quick. We'll start with the discharge from the pump. Push and hold. And then we're just going to push and hold the next piece. Couple seconds. We got her. So now we've got our pump installed. You can see the pump down in the bottom of the pit. Everything's looking really good. We're ready to put the lid on and basically cover this up with gravel and cover up the discharge back there. We're all set. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. MDS pop-ups, four inch 90. It has a pre-drilled slot here at the bottom. A little cap that pops on the top. We're going to cut this to Basically, we're going to attach this 4-inch pipe to the MDS-90. And you notice it doesn't fit, right? So we've got to make an adjustment. So you notice that this is a PVC fitting, thin wall PVC, and it does not fit the corrugated pipe. There are truly 20 or 30 different types of adapters 
and they all work really good. What we're going to do is use this section of this adapter. It's got some little barbs in here and it's going to snap into place very secure, very secure, will not come off. <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and just push our 90 onto this adapter and we're all done. It's set. We'll go ahead and set this to grade and backfill and that's how simple it is to put a pop-up on. It's, it's not difficult at all and whether you use this adapter or several other adapters they all work great. So you can see I basically just cut the sod around the whole pipe backfilled underneath of it. It's nice and secure. Remember it has already has a slot cut in it in that 90 to let the water drain. So as water comes down the line it pushes up this pop-up. Whoops, get my finger down under there. <laughs> pushes this pop-up up and the water disperses just right across the yard. Really simple. And don't be fooled. Th these things are readily available. So much easier to get these at Home Depot, Depot, or at Lowe's, either one, Ace. They're everywhere. And I think they're about 15 bucks. There's other options. I've showed you many other options of how you can do this. And you can see we've got this all put up. This line goes all the way up to that downspout through all of the bushes, through the sprinklers. Piece of cake, guys. Easy job that you can easily do yourself, I promise. Not hard to do. A little bit of cleanup, and we're done. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Hey, just a quick reminder, you know, I've said it a couple times. If you are interested in getting some work done by Apple Drains, I urge you to get on our schedule. We, uh, we are extremely busy this time of year, even up north, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, the schedule fills quickly. We're here in Orlando right now, and you know, if you need to be on this schedule, this is by far the busiest office of all. So please, if you're interested, go to the service sign up and sign up online.